All right, so today we're gonna to take another look at 4-axis with VCarve Pro and kind of get into it. Uh, this one's a little more irregular of a shape and we'll use the same workflow as the last time and see what it gets us. So let's go ahead and uh, close down the file all together. No, I don't save it. All right. All right, so we're starting from scratch. So we're gonna just create a new file. And in this file, we're gonna be on rotary and we're gonna adjust the length and diameter. So the diameter we're staying in is three and we're saying we're using a three inch by three inch square piece of stock, okay? Uh, job type is rotary. Uh, we're gonna zero on the top of the cylinder on the flat. We're gonna lay that parallel to the table and we're gonna zero on center. Okay, and for this setup, I'm pretty sure it's set with Y and we choose OK. All right, now before I do that, uh, the actual length of the stock or the part model is six inches. Okay, but <clears throat> I need something to hold on to. So I'm going to make it a little bit larger. So I'm going to make it seven inches. Okay, so I know that the stock is greater in length than the length of the part that I'm working with. All right, so we'll go there. The next step is modeling. From modeling, we're going to import and we're going to just grab the file that we're working with and we're going to choose this one. OK, so when it imports it, it imports it on center and you can see it's in irregular shape. Uh, we can position it like flip flip which side it's uh, facing towards. OK, uh, we also do notice that we do have a, an undercut. So there's faces like below this red line here. Uh, which that's going to impact the way that it imports. We do want to import a full model 3D. Now, there is some uh, position move, so you can like rotate or, or move the model and kind of adjust where it is. This lets you turn it this way. This positioning, uh, I find not to be exactly what I was expecting, uh, but we do want to adjust this a little bit and kind of move this center line down a little bit in the model. I think that's okay. Let's go back to this view. All right, so we kind of <clears throat> move this up a little bit. It moves up here a little bit as well. All right, so we've made some adjustment. We'll notice that there's material left over on either side of the part and we'll choose okay. All right, so now we're in this render. So anything below the center line, we can see how it affects or has an impact on the shape of our part, which is okay. Um, but this is how it imports, so that's pretty good. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna merge the zero plane and the handle together. So we're gonna uh, highlight both of these by holding shift and clicking on each of them. And then we're gonna right click, go to combine, and merge. Okay, so now that makes this kind of one item. And then on this center line here, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go to properties, and this is where we can adjust this base height. And this base height puts a cylinder down the middle of the center line of the part. And this is what we use to protect uh, the, the jaws on our part, right? We wanna make sure that we're not hitting the jaws um, so we use this diameter, but you notice how as you increase this diameter, it also impacts, you know, your part geometry as well. So the question is, does it make more sense to do that in your CAD software? And I'm going to say in this case, yes, because we can see the impact that it has on it, but we can move it in and make an adjustment here, you know, so this way we can have a cylinder so that we're not cutting through the part itself this cylinder will act as a, a piece of material to keep the part connected to the stock. All right, we'll go ahead and close that. So that's our model preparation. From here, we'll go to gadgets. Uh, this is gonna be the rounding tool path. We just say the size of our blank here. We're gonna use this uh, raster routine. We can pick our tool and our, adjust our tool settings there and we'll say okay. So at this point, our expectation is we zeroed the flat uh, parallel to the table. It will go and knock out the corners here. 
and cut to the three inch diameter. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then we'll jump over to cam. We'll go to uh, In here, you know, we're gonna pick our tool and our settings. And this is gonna rough running down the length of the part is really uh, the direction that I want. So if I don't have that direction, I'll adjust it because that's the way that I wanna cut it. Uh, we can turn the visibility of that one off. It appears, uh, it appears it's running around the part and I don't want it to run that way. So let's go ahead and double click on that. And then we're gonna change this angle from zero to 90 and then calculate. All right, now it's running down the length of the part, I believe. It's hard to see in this view, but okay, that's what we're looking for there. Let's close this. We'll go to finishing. Uh, we'll go ahead and calculate that, and that will give us our finishing tool path. Let's go ahead and play the simulation. You know, and this is the end result that we get. You know, the center of the tool is going to go right up to the edge of this. That's what our expectation is, right? If we look at our finishing, that's what we're getting is the center of the tool right to that position. So when we're looking for clearance, this diameter needs to be greater than our fixture. Uh, same thing with the roughing. The roughing is going all the way out to the job size. So ours is seven inches. So the center of the tool is going to be going uh you know, right to the edge of the boundary of that seven inches. So that's the distance it goes. Same with the, the rounding tool path. It goes right to the job size. All right. All right. So that's what we're looking at here today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, just go ahead and uh, reply to the, <clears throat> the video or group or uh, forum this may be located in. See you in the next one.